Hello. We are here today at the World Resource Forum in Peking, and I'm Robin Kleiner from Student Reporter, student at the, and master in, at the University of Singal. And I'm glad to have with me uh, today Gerber John Gerberts, if I pronounce well. I'll, I'll, um, I'll try. Yeah. <laughs> representative of the European Union. So if you want to introduce quickly yourself. Yes, of course, of course. Yes, my name is Gerben Jan Gerbrandi. Um, I apologize for my name. My parents didn't expect me to start a career in the international environment, I think. I'm a member of European Parliament. Uh, I come from the Netherlands. Uh, I'm vice chair of the Environment Committee in this parliament and very much involved in biodiversity and uh, resource efficiency. Um, the first question is, so we have seen today that several pa panelists were speaking about the footprint in Europe and we get really the, 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 the message that in Europe you have overconsumption. Um, I want to know how do you react about that, what is your opinion about consumption, consumption how it's going uh, further, if you, you, see, you think that in the future you, Europeans should consume less than what they are doing today. Yes, well, it's, it's a very serious problem, um, and I see two developments. Uh, first of all, we have to change the way that we consume in, in Europe, um, and that will be difficult because that means changing your culture as well. For instance, why do we have to eat meat every day? Um, if we eat slightly less amounts of meat, that saves enormous amounts of water, of, of land, etc., etc. So that's one thing, and that is the, the consumer... Um, him or herself who can change that. The other one is that we have to uh, make sure that the production process is much more sustainable. Mm -hmm. If you drive a car that's uh, driven on sustainable energy, then it's not really a problem if you drive a lot of miles. Uh, now it is a problem because it's not sustainable. So if we do both, I think that we can uh, decrease our um, footprint enormously, that we can get to the one planet uh, that we use, uh, that we could use one planet instead of one or two that we've uh, used now. So one of the aspects that you mentioned was the part of the awareness of the consumption side also. Is for you today this sense of urgency on the environmental issue in Europe well understood uh, today, or do you think that we should do much more in Europe for that? Well, um, it's a very important issue, because we are not going to change our economy without the people on the street uh, supporting us. So awareness is crucial. And I see a few developments. One is um, that people are becoming more and more aware. Um, you see people buying more and more uh, green products, uh, they care about the use of their car. Um, so, and for instance in the Netherlands, um, uh, just consumers spend 1 billion euros in the last uh, year on um, renewable energy by putting solar panels on their roofs, etc. So there is a, a huge bottom-up approach there. Um, on the other hand, it's still a small group. And we have to make uh, it happen that this group increases and that we go to 100% of people who are uh, very, very much aware about the importance of environmental impact. Mm -hmm. And will be now interesting also to know um, what's the, the role of Europe as an institution, also in terms of global governance in Europe. How do you see the role of the European administration in that process, if it's more uh, that all this process should be led more in the national level or also in the international level, uh, intergovernmental level? Well, it, it's, it's a combination of the two. Um, the good thing that I like about Europe is that um, the European Union has a long-term approach, a long-term vision. And that is, especially in, uh, with these kind of issues, that is extremely important. We are talking about how should the world look like in 2050, and not how should the world or how should my country look like next year when there are next, uh, the next elections. Um, so that's very important. So we, we need the European Union for a strong, long-term compass. Um, on the other hand, the European Union 
uh, has 500 million people, we need the member states to implement policy and to, to, to do their own things to uh, facilitate the bottom-up uh, approaches that I was talking about earlier. So it's, it's a combination of the two. Um, a few things we really have to do together, for instance, energy. Um, if we make the real switch towards sustainable energy, we might have windmills in the Netherlands and solar panels in Spain. Mm -hmm. But when the wind is not blowing, we need energy from the south. And, or when the sun is not shining, uh, Spain needs energy from the north. So therefore, we, we have to create, we have to uh, make these, these huge grids that are able to, um, to deal with that. And do you think that there, the investment for this huge grid should become from uh, the European institution more directly? Again, it's, it's a combination. Um, mm -hmm. And in the end, it doesn't matter because it's, it's um, um, the taxpayer pays. And whether this money goes through the national budget or through the European budget is, is not the most important question. We have to pay for it. I think private money can be used for it because in the end it's a very profitable investment. Um, so I don't think that is, that is a matter of European or national. We have to do it and we have to do it together. I want now to come back to a concept that you just mentioned about international versus intergovernance uh, in a global, more global perspective. Um, I want to know if today you have the impression that we are already working together, so sure, much more can be done, but what is the actual situation perhaps for you, what it's looked like, and how do you see that in the near future? Well, I'm, I'm not very positive about, uh, when we talk about resources, uh, about uh, how it's happening now in the world. Um, I think that at this moment it is country versus country. Mm -hmm. And countries are trying to secure a supply of important resources. Uh, I heard very interesting things this afternoon. Someone saying there is no country, no, not even a region in the world that can do without uh, the import of resources. So we are all depending on each other. Um, but I also saw a presentation from a uh, Chinese representative of the metals industry. And their hunger for more and more and more is in, insatiable. It's, it's an enormous amount of, of new resources that a country like China needs. And my message today was also that if we uh, leave that to individual countries, we will well, end up by, by, by fighting uh, against each other for, for resources. Mm -hmm. And the strongest will win, the winner will take all. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I made a plea for a, a better international governance um, and see whether we can look at it together uh, if we create only bilateral independencies, uh, we're not going to, uh, to do a very good job. So we need a multilateral approach. It's the only way to secure um, uh, well, a, a safe and prosperous uh, world. You mentioned also today China has optimistic, in an optimistic way, I think China is a key player for peace, also in this term of uh, war for, for resources. Uh, how do you see this future with China? How is today perhaps the collaboration with Europe and can, what can Europe uh, do for, for improve, to improve this collaboration? <laughs> yes, well China is at the moment a very difficult partner for, for us, for the Americans, for the rest of the world. Um, and that's because on the one hand it's an economic world power, it's the country with most inhabitants in the world, um, so they are politically and economically extremely important. On the other hand, uh, at the international stage, they do not yet play their, the political role that corresponds with their economic uh, power. So what I would like the Chinese to do is to make the next step um, on the international stage and to take this responsibility and to understand that they have to be with us, the architects of the new uh, international uh, institutions. The current institutions are all based on what we in the West have formulated. Whether it's the, international, uh, the United Nations or whatsoever, it's all based on, on 
Western philosophy, Western ideas. And it's one of the reasons why it doesn't correspond very well with uh, the Chinese way of thinking. So I want them to be stronger, in, more strongly involved, to be able to make the international institutions not just Western events, uh, inventions, but joint inventions. And then they will be much more um, uh, effective than they are now. So that is what I wish that China will do the coming years. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for this, this time that you can spend with us and thank you for this positive a view that you, you may have and always with this construct, constructive uh, perspective that was very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye.